Greetings my lovelies and thank you for stopping by the circle today. This week's video is one that is very near and dear to my heart because it is something that I wish I could do but I do not have the time, artistic ability, or the patience to do so. And I am talking about book covers. So let's go. Now, we've all heard the story, don't judge a book by its cover. Well, when it comes to people, obviously, we don't want to make quick assumptions based off upon an outward appearance because sometimes they can't always help the way they look. Meaning like if someone is on hard times, their clothes may not always be the cleanest, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they're dirty or dangerous. And don't even get me started on the whole thing about skin color because that is just some bull. Anyways, but when it comes to books, we definitely do judge them by their covers, but that's okay because that's what they are designed to do. They are designed to catch a reader's eye and give them an idea of what the book is about in like 10 seconds. That's a lot of work for something that is essentially just a pretty picture with some words on it. But a cover can make or break your book. And trust me, speaking as someone who tried to go a little bit cheaper in the book cover, your sales will suffer for it. And as a reader, I know that if I see a book cover that looks kind of cheap, I may not want to get it because that could be an indicator that the rest of it inside is not going to have a lot of care and dedication to it. That's not always true, but First impressions are key and you never get a second chance to make another first impression. Now when it comes to how your book cover will actually look, there's some things I'm going to talk about a little later in this video, but just your overall style and aesthetic really depends on you. Do you like extremely ornate covers, a lot of intricate little pieces that give little hints and clues? Or are you more of a simpler person with a very minimalistic cover? Case in point, a quart of frost and starlight may not seem like much, but if you go closer into the borders around the book cover, you'll find certain elements that represent the characters in the story. And the original covers of the Outlander, they are very plain and simplistic. Or they can hit somewhere in the middle like Jen Moresi's The Savior's Champion. Like I said, just the generalized style of it really depends upon you and what you want. However, that's not to say that certain types of books don't have certain common threads that run through them. Now remember, these are only just guidelines. They're not the end all be all, but they are stuff that you should keep in mind while planning your book cover. So I've found most of these books off of Pinterest I tried to find pre-made covers because they're kind of generic, they aren't someone else's covers, but alas, that wasn't always true. So here you have a couple of examples that I found over the internet of some science fiction novels. Very easily, when I was doing my search, of course, you know, you kind of get some random books thrown, in, thrown into them, but these three really stuck out to me as key science fiction for three main things. Two of them had to do with space. So that automatically makes it think of space travel and science. The last one had technical elements into the cover to where it looked like a grid, I think is what the term is called, that would make me think that this is not a fantasy book or a romance book. It would make me think that it had to do with more maybe cyborgs or aliens or genetic enhancements. So now let's go on to my favorite one, fantasy. Fantasies are probably by far the easiest covers to recognize, even with the levels of high fantasy and urban fantasy. For your high fantasies, they're probably going to have like mythological creatures in them, or some type of person displaying magic, maybe a warrior, even a dragon. And urban fictions, urban fantasies, are going to have someone in modern day clothes displaying magic. So that way you, again, you can look at it and you can kind of get an idea of what the book is about. <laughs> so when we get on to romance, I always think of those horrible Dimeback Harlequin novels where the people are in lovingly embrace. 
usually you have couples that are just about to be kissed and if they're spicy you might have a half naked man or woman on the cover but again noticing the similar thread here there is tends to be a similar feel to a type of book if I'm making any sense which I really hope that I am historical fictions are going to have a mixture of two things they're either going to have a person in period piece, maybe like a gladiator or a knight, or they're going to have something that maybe represents their main character and the area and time period at the end. So if it's a woman, it's going they're going to be in period of clothing. Maybe there's a castle in the background or a village or something that denotes or will make you feel like it is set in the past. Now for juvenile and young adult, the, and I'm doing these two together because they can kind of blend in depending upon certain things because while I consider Percy Jackson new adult, I can also consider it young adult as it matured as it continued on forward. But these books tend to be brightly colored and typically cartoons with something that happens in the book. They are meant to grab the child's eye, that's why they are so bright and colorful. With the same reasoning of why Mushu in the original Mulan is red, yellow, and blue. Those are very primary colors, so he was meant to appeal to the younger viewer's eyes. But, as you can see, you can clearly figure out what these books are without ever picking them up. And, l like I said in my book review of The Library of the Unwritten, sometimes I buy books solely because of their cover. Because I know that it takes a shit ton of work to make a good cover. It really does. And I can appreciate the art that it is. And yes, to me, book covers are art. So if you are traditionally published, you won't necessarily have to worry so much about choosing your book cover because the publishing house will do it for you. They have a marketing and design team that will work to create something that is going to catch the eye of a lot of readers. Now, you do get some say in what the cover is and you may be able to tweak some things here and there, but overall they kind of have the final say in it, which is kind of sucky given that it's your book, but then again, they know marketing, so it's a catch-22. But if you are indie, this is something that you really have to think about because you really have to make sure that your cover is eye-catching, looks good, and blends in well with your genre while at the same time sticking out. And that is very hard to do. So what do you need to do if you're working as an indie person to make your, all, make your cover? You can choose to focus on a couple of things your characters, maybe an important piece in your story, or maybe an important place in your story, or even just an overall theme. So, with it, for example, with my own covers, with The Lost Guardian, the book that is here is meant to represent the family book that's in the story. This elven looking lady up here in the top is meant to resent, represent not only my main character, but her ancestors as well. And because there are some magical elements into it, you would think that it is a fantasy book, which it is. Now, if you were to go to Souls in the Dark, I wasn't too focused on making the series like the same, just simply because that's really hard to do when you're indie sometimes and you're working on your own. I chose this image because of a particular place that is a turning point in the novel and it has a overall kind of spooky gothic theme which is a little bit heavier featured in the second book than it is in the first book because the first book is all about magic and discovering your magic and the second book has also ghosts in it and you're in a cemetery for something and if you have no idea what I'm talking about then that just means you need to go get them and read them. And for my third book, Time of Prophecy, this one is meant to represent the big epic final battle in the magic plane to where they wield their spells and all that other fun jazz. And honestly, that was my most fun thing that I wrote. And I thoroughly enjoy the preparation and the battle scene. But this image, I was like, oh yes, 
The little girl in red is meant to represent my main character, and the big massive castle is meant to represent the sheer force and knowledge of her opponent. Now when it comes to my latest book, I decided that I wanted the covers to have a similar theme running through it. So you should expect to see this sort of grungy background with splashy lettering and an item on the cover. Now those items are important to the overall theme and arc of the story, but I'm not going to tell you why. You will definitely find out the meaning for it in the second book, but that is all that I'm going to say on that. And then uh, now that I'm done shamelessly plugging in my books, I'm going to tell you where you can find your own. If you're an indie author, you have your budget, and you gotta try to do the best you can within your budget. So that means that I'm going to provide low price, moderately priced, and like, oh, this is kind of expensive, ranges for everyone. Again, this is a small list and it does not in no way, shape, or form encompass everyone that you can use. Please do your own research. Google them, simple book covers for indie authors, pre-made book covers, blase, 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 and go through it, read reviews, read testimonials, and so on and so forth, and work within your budget. There's no need to bankrupt yourself just for a pretty book cover. So your cheapest option probably would be freelance work. Well, actually, your cheapest option will be if you know enough of graphic design to make a decent cover, go ahead and do that yourself. However, if you are like me, you do not have that. If you have a friend that is willing to do it to you for a cheap price, then hey, use your friend and make sure that you credit them. But if you don't have either one of those two options, freelance artists are probably going to be your best bet, especially if you have a very tight budget. I would probably recommend Fiverr. Remember, this is just one site. Now, I've used Fiverr before. I used it for my Lost Guardian trilogy, and I liked the work that I got from it. I was very pleased. However, I had to find the images that I wanted to use in my book cover. So I had to find them and think about images and way that they would work together and then make that selection. You can spend literally days doing this. And I just didn't want to waste that time doing that again. So while I had the money, I decided to spend a little bit extra on some other things that I'm going to talk about later. Another possibly cheaper option would be to find or purchase pre-made covers. These are ones that all the work has already been done. You can sometimes get a series in them if you're lucky or if, you're, if the designers are willing to work with you to help you create these series covers, then that could be a good thing too. They tend to be a lot cheaper than say a custom made piece. So if pre-made it just isn't working for you and you do have maybe a little bit of extra money to spend on a book cover and you want to go the custom route, hey, that's great. A lot of people also offer pre-made and custom covers at the same time. So what I like to do is I like to look at the pre-mades to get an idea of how their general art theme looks, you know, how they can do different genres, and if I like it, then I'll ask them for a, cu a custom piece. And the company that I use is Paper and, S and Sage, and I thoroughly enjoy working with them, and I look forward to seeing what they do with the rest of my series and the Tale of Blade and Darkness, and I'm super excited. We've already worked on a majority of the covers. The only thing they really need is the sizing for the books and the title. So, <laughs> but this is a little bit more. It's a little bit pricier, but not as expensive as some as some other companies are. 99 Designs is also a good place to go if you want a nice catalog for it. But they do tend to be on the pricier end, with even just the eBooks running you about three or five hundred dollars, depending on what it is and depending on if it's a series or not. Also. The Book Designer is another good company that you can use for moderate to expensively expensive books, ebook, paperback, series, standalone. Now, granted, if you are doing a hardback paperback ebook, that is going to add to the cost of your book cover. If you are just doing a paperback and ebook, that's about the standardized form, or if you're just doing an ebook, that tends to be the cheapest. Because there's a lot less work that goes into an ebook than a paper or hardback because they have to take into account the spine 
and just the overall thickness of the book. Well, that is all that I have for you today on covers. I could really go on forever and talking about specific examples of what is amazing and what sucks, but I don't have time for that. However, if you want to continue this journey with me and the wonderful world of book covers, you can follow me on my social media here listed down below. And if you really want to study and analyze my books and their covers and how they match their themes, then head on over to my website, which is linked down below, and check it out for yourself. So, until we meet again, fare thee well, my friends, and happy reading.